Graph neural networks extract information from data encoded on graphs. They are able to exploit underlying regularities in the data structure to create architectures that are stable, scalable, and invariant to permutations. Several applications, speech recognition and epidemic modeling being two examples, exhibit a time dependency in addition to the spatial structure encoded in the graph. The evolution of the process depends on the past values the process has taken up to this point. The time dependency as well as the variable lengths of data sequences motivate architectures specialized in dealing with sequential data. A simple example to illustrate the estimation of properties of a sequence is to decide if a moving particle that we are not controlling is going to enter a forbidden area. In the figure, we represent the forbidden region and several trajectories. This trajectory stays clear of the danger zone, and so does this trajectory. But this one does not. We want to be able to tell this trajectory apart from the other two. This is a problem that is time dependent. Suppose that we observe the trajectory at different points in time, times one through eight in the figure. It is clear that depending on the time index, we have different degrees of confidence on the category to which the trajectory belongs. At time one, the three trajectories are the same. They are still the same at time two. At time three, they start to diverge and could start making a determination that the red trajectory is on a collision path, but a determination is likely premature. At time four, we can have a larger degree of confidence. And at time five, we are but certain that the red trajectory in the middle will enter the forbidden region while the other two will stay clear of it. At time six, we are certain that the red trajectory is at fault while the other two seem safe. At time seven, the two black trajectories up and down seem to be pulling away, something that we can ascertain with confidence at time eight. This problem is not something that we can map to a sequence of classifications, which is something we would know how to do. It maps to the classification of a sequence, which is not something that we know how to do. Indeed, the destiny of the trajectory is not a function of the current position only. It is a function of previous positions as well. Physical systems have inertia. The direction of movement, movement is important. An AI that maps the current position xt to the prediction of trajectory class yt is less accurate than an AI that maps the history of positions x0 through xt to a prediction on the trajectory's class yt. We do not want to predict yt from xt. We want to predict yt from the trajectory's history x of 0 through x of t. The challenge with making predictions on a sequence is memory growth. Predictions on a sequence of observations depend on the complete history of the process. As the iteration index t grows, the number of observations in which we base our predictions also grows. At time one, we observe input x1 and make prediction y1 hat. This is the problem we have studied thus far. It can be easy or difficult, depending on the dimensionality and structure of x1. At time two, we observe input x2. We now have to make a prediction y2 hat. But this prediction depends not only on the value we observe at time two, it also depends on the observation at time one. The amount of data we have to store doubles. More importantly, the complexity of the learning test squares. Remember that learning complexity grows exponentially with the number of input dimensions. At time three, we observe input x3. To make a prediction y hat 3. This prediction has to depend on the observation x3, but also on the observations x2 and x1. Memory has tripled, more importantly, the complexity of the task cubes, because the complexity of sampling a space grows exponentially with its dimensionality. In general, at any given time t, we have a new observation xt and make a pr new prediction y hat t. This prediction is not only a function of the current state, but a function of the whole past. We have a linear memory growth with a, with a consequent exponential growth in the complexity of the learning task. This growth is unbounded, which is untenable. Recurrent neural networks resort to the estimation of a hidden state to avoid this unbounded memory growth. Before we talk about RNNs, we need to talk about memory in stochastic processes. 
This will play an important role in motivating and understanding the architecture. The classical tool to study memory in time sequences is the Markov random process. We say a stochastic process is Markov or memoryless if the conditional probability of observing a certain value at time t plus one, given that we know the complete history of the process from time one to t, is the same conditional probability of knowing only the state at time t. More succinctly, the process is Markov if it is the same to condition on the current value x of t or to condition on the whole trajectory of the process. This condition further implies that the future trajectory of the system signified here by xt plus 1 is independent of the past, signified here by the trajectory values observed between times 1 and t minus 1, provided that we know the present, signified here by state x of t. This further implies that when it comes to predicting the future, knowledge of the past is irrelevant. Put differently, if we are interested in the future trajectory of the system, it suffices for us to know the value at the present point in time. If we're also given information about the past trajectory of the system, it doesn't alter our prediction of the future. In addition to the state x of t, a Markov process may also have some outputs y of t. When this is the case, the outputs are assumed to be conditionally independent. The probability of the output taking some value yt given only the current value of the stochastic process xt is the same as the probability of yt conditioned on the entire trajectory of the stochastic process. An example of an output is the trajectory category, whether we are entering the forbidden area or not. The reason for us to introduce memoryless mar Markov processes is that if we are given a Markov process, learning is equivalent to a sequence of learning problems. We do not have the challenge of learning from a sequence. We have the simpler challenge of a sequence of learning problems. To see that this is true, note that the evolution of the state of the process, x of t, is a chain of memoryless transitions. That is, at every time step, the transition from x of t to x of t plus 1 depends only on the current value of the process. The past is irrelevant. Moreover, the outputs of the process, yt, depend only on the current state of the process. The output yt depends only on the state xt. The output x yt plus 1 depends only on the state xt plus 1. Thus, if we want to design an AI capable of predicting the output of the process, it is sufficient for the AI to learn how to mimic the conditional distribution of the observations yt given the present state xt. Since the past is irrelevant in nature, it is irrelevant for the AI. This is all good, but we have already seen an example where predicting the future of the trajectory benefits from information about the past. The reason why this happens is because the process in the example is not Markov. When processes are not Markov, we have to resort to architectures that take the history of the sequence into consideration. One such architecture is the recurrent neural network that we introduce in the next video.